Hi. Welcome to week three of the tar Little Ptarmigan, and we're going to work on the bird today. I realized last week I was getting ahead of myself by saying, let's go to the great gray owl. That'll be next week. Welcome to week three of Oops, I have to shut off my phone. Ptarmigan, and we're going to work on the bird today. I realized last week I was getting ahead of myself by saying, okay. <laughs> I keep forgetting that part. I'll get better at this as I go along. <laughs> anyway, let's just get right to it and see what we can get done with the bird. It's a pretty simple shaped bird. We're not seeing a lot of the little puffy feathers that are on the back of the wings because we're seeing the front, mostly the front of the bird. There's a little bit of, of variation here at the top of the wing where the light is, is not being captured but it's pretty simple, so let's get going. Okay. So we're gonna start with just thinking about the shape of the bird. And I'm going to start with some pretty light blue because I don't want it to be completely white. I'm not seeing it as completely white and I'm just going to come in and and thicken up the paint and and give us their shapes that we're looking for. I'm going to be nice and slow on this because I don't want to get ahead of myself and I'm actually going to switch out brushes. I'm going to go to my my favorite brush that um, Dakota Princeton flat the D yeah and use it for creating this shape. Okay. Looking back and forth at the image and I'm just softening that edge and pulling it in. So I'm just thinking about the shape of the bird. I have to stand back so I can make sure. One of the things, yeah, stand back, make sure I'm getting that shape where I'm happy with it. Move forward. And now, yes. Happy with that. That comes down a little further down here. And let's get into this. I can see a little bit of its tail here. I'm just going to bring that up and bring this shape up here and it's rounded. And then it comes down here and it's and then we have, this is the wing. So I'm going to bring just those, that shape there to in the wing. i stand back and see if I'm happy with that. It needs to come down a little further yet. There we go. And then this needs to come here a little bit more. I think there we go. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to lighten all of this up just so that I can get the shape and see it and I can see if I'm happy with that. Come down here a little bit more. It takes a bit to get the shape correct. Um, I'm, I've got the, the this directed to you guys and so it's not as um it's not as directed to me as it normally would be so that i can see everything at the same angle so i'm a little you know distortion can happen when you're not um yeah when you're not okay let's get these shapes over here if we can take this and add a little bit of that and and we're going to come, I can see that this shape comes here 
and comes here. I'm going to back up because I don't really want to lose. I'm going to come down here, straighten it here, and then come up the front and cover over the road. Let's take a little bit of... Okay, backing up, looking at it. Could be a little rounder in here, so let's just bring, tuck that out a little bit. I'm going to clean my brush, gonna dry it off, and I'm going to come in and just touch the edges and make sure that I've got the paint where I want it to be. Dry it off, do that again. I don't want it to go onto the background where it doesn't need to be on the background. Okay, I think that's getting there. Well, let's just darken that up a little bit because we've got oof, a little bit more. I know we have some reflected light in here in here just on the chest part we'll come back to that we're just building up and seeing if we can correct all the angles since we've been working on the background so much okay now let's get the head nice and carefully and looking at it I can see that it flattens out and then rounds up here. There we go. I think, let's back up and look again. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, what happens when I look um, back up, I can see both the image that I'm working on on the iPad and I can see um, the whole of the painting that I'm working on. And it just gives me some distance to be able to see if I've got the shapes correct. Okay, so I'm backing up and I'm going to move forward here and just... Okay, now that beak is going to take a smaller brush. So let's see if I can find a smaller brush that will be easier to manage and control and get the shape that I want on there. Because it's not a very big beak and we want it to be okay and I want that shape to be correct. I don't have the shape down to the beak correct yet. So let's take another little brush have different brushes in my hands and see if I can get that shape up down to the beak correct. Okay, and this comes around here. Um, and then this comes down here. All of this little bits of information I'm putting in help to um, make final decisions at the end of of this painting. Back up, check and see where I'm at, grab my Dakota brush um, so that I can see if I have to correct any of the paint, pushing it forward, getting that shape in there. Okay, now the next little bit of information I want to put in is just that beak. Okay, so it's coming. We see that it comes straight out here. It's not very big. It's not a huge beak. And nice and tidy in here. Just a little bit down. This little bit of an angle here as it swoops up there. 
and then it's going to come down and yeah, bring that roundness into it. A little bit rounder and down. I still have it too big. But I'm not going to worry about that because the paint is wet. So I can come in and just erase it. And it tells me that I have something missing here. So the information is not exactly where I need it to be. And there you go. One beak erased. A little bit of that. I'll just fill that in with the paint from behind. Okay. I think that looks better. That gives us a better place to start from again. So taking time and moving slow and getting to where you want to get to in a slow manner is very helpful. Well, it's, it's the only way I work. So I'm going to bring that down a little further. See if that will be the shape I'm looking for. Back up. Okay. Okay. I'll just pull that back a little bit. But I think that's closer. Let's, uh, let's check this eye out here and see if we can that might be part of the problem is that I've got the eye too elongated too I'm just going to make it nice and big right now let it dry give it a minute to sort of dry well it's not going to be dry very fast so I'm just going to come in and reshape that um, If I have too much paint on my brush, one of the things I do is I take my brush. <laughs> well, thank you, Burke, for saying I'm the best artist. <laughs> oh, you got to love grandchildren. Aren't they just fabulous? <laughs> and I, I'll take my brush and what I'll do is, if I've got too much paint on my brush, is I will remove some of the paint off and put it on the back of my hand just because it allows me to have some control over it and then I can come in and I can reshape everything and get what I'm looking for here. Thinking about that shape just bringing that around that's a nice eye on it and we'll get focused in on the head first before we do much more and and then we'll do the feet <laughs> all right just working on this thinking about what shapes i'm seeing I'm going to pull the image closer so I can get it. Oh, come on. Open up. There we go. Now I can see the eye better on my little iPad. Okay. Slowly build this up. One shape to the next shape. Get that the other Dakota in and let's move that paint around nice and gently and it tells me yeah nice and gently and pull that down and push it in place okay Okay, we're going to come down here a little bit more. 
move that paint around. It needs to be a little bit lighter yet. So the, the liner that I'm using is uh, the Sapphire Robert Simmons and it's a liner number, what size? What size is it? One, a size one. Okay, and I'm just building up to where I'm, okay, I want this to be, just thinking about it. Okay, slowly I'm getting there. I'm just taking my time. It's one of the things when you're first painting is, is being patient enough to actually stick with it and be slow. And if I start to feel impatient, I, I know then that it's time to slow down even more because it means I'm going to make, um, I'm just gonna make, silly errors that I don't need to make. I can just be slower and I'll get my information that I want. Better as I just slow down. Okay, and then and coming down here. This is the concentration part. It's actually hard to talk when I'm concentrating and, and trying just to shift my eyes back and forth so that I can make sure I'm not, um, yeah, make sure I'm as close to the correct shape as possible. Back up, move the picture back a little bit. Okay, I think, okay, so that's, I'm going to soften that little bit there, um, and then I'm going to come down here and I see that there's a little flat, bring that forward, okay, and then bring this one down over this way. The beak is actually black, but right now I'm just working in a dark gray. I will come in with a, a darker color in just a few minutes. I'm going to come in and straighten this out a little bit with my Dakota. And I'm going to straighten it out this way. So what do you think of that beak? It's still not correct in here, but I can get that softened and we'll get that covered up. I think the size of it is more accurate. I think this, it could still be a little bit big, isn't it? Let's shift that back down a little bit and see if we can get it to the right size. Yeah, there, maybe that's a little bit better. Hey, I think that's a little bit better. Now I'm gonna come in with the, the white and I'm gonna reshape this part here, even though it's not actually white, it's in, it's in shadow. I just want to be able to get that to where I need it to be. Ritz my my acrylic to keep it nice. Um, hum, 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 hum. Okay, let's bring that down here. There we go. Just reshape that a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, thin that out. Bring that. Yeah, this is the concentration part. This takes so much concentration that it really is hard to yitter yatter and and keep thinking about what I'm doing because I'm looking and concentrating very deeply on what I'm doing. Way too much water on that. Oops, they're going to have to come in and remove that water a little bit. Find some little pieces of... Okay. Okay, there. Got too much water in there. So I just needed to bring that down. We'll come back in here and we will just touch this and make it fit into the background better. Okay, and reshape a little bit. Back and forth we go to get this shape as close as we can to accurate. Now, of course, that part is away. That part of the, of the um, head is away from, is away from the light. So we have some interesting Interesting, interesting light happening in this area. So we're just going to build it up. And we may see that we have to lighten in the behind after we get this all put in place. It comes up this way. And then it comes down to here. And we're going to soften it here. all these little details and I see that there's a little bit of light here where the the sun is capturing or being captured on this little area okay and I'm going to soften this edge just going to clean the brush dry it off and soften just a little bit Thinking about the shape of the head as it rounds down towards the eyes. Moving the paint around little by little. And bringing it back in here a little bit further. I think I'm happy with that. I think that's pretty good. You know, that head is a little, not quite long enough. Ah, back and forth, back and forth. So this is what I do. I spend a lot of time going, hmm, oh, that's not the right shape. I need to change it up just a little bit further. It will make it look better if I do that. Oh, bring in that light, bring a little light there. Bring some light here. Probably have to move that. Okay. The other thing I see at the very front of the beak is some interesting, um, uh, just on the nose of the beak, is some interesting darker um, little areas. And this is because they're starting to change from their winter plumage to their summer plumage and I'm just going to create these shapes by just slowly dotting in the the information till I get to where I want it to be. Hi Burke! 
How are you doing today? I think we're going to need to do a drawing session, you and I. You have time for that? Maybe tomorrow or later tonight? Okay, so now I've got that shape in. I'm going to stand back and I'm going to look and see that I've got this a little too far. This is not quite so big. Taking my Dakota brush and erasing some of that paint and making it just sort of... Okay. Still think we need to come with this and flatten that head out a little bit. Just a tiny bit will make a difference. I think we got too far along is this. I got too exuberant. I'm not sure if I can put, oh yeah, I can still push the paint. I didn't leave it too long, so I've been, I'm able to push that paint and get that shape to be a little bit more correct. Doesn't probably help that it's white compared to the what it should be, but we'll work on that as we continue on. So I'm into the small brushes now because it's easier to manage the smaller brushes. Oh, that's too dark, too dark. Add some light into there. Move that paint around. Thinking about the shape of the head, we're going to come in and finish that eye and I think that will also help position the, the, uh, the bird for us. Okay. Okay. So the beak a little bit more right here. Right there. Okay. And the eye needs to be a little elongated back, just a touch, not a lot. I'm backing up and I'm moving forward. Okay, and I can see that there is a little place here in front of the eye that is capturing the light. So let's put that in because that helps me to make sure that the shape is getting to where I want it to be. And this still needs to be a little shorter yet. There we go. Okay. I think, okay, let's get this shape here correct. The eye is going down right about there. Oops, need a little bit of paint on my brush. That might be helpful. And again, the, the, the sun is captured, being captured on that little area around the eye. Nice and slowly, carefully building up. And I've got that angle. Let's get this nice and rounded. And I've stepped back so I can see that it's the right size. It needs to be a little bit larger, I think. All of these kinds of when I'm working in this, I'm just very quiet and I'm just moving back and forth. I, I, uh, I'm sure I'm wearing a hole in my rug and I you know, can walk kilometers every t painting session, just going back three steps, going forward three steps, going back three steps, going forward three steps. Let's um, think about this. We've got this interesting shape here. And we have here. I'm going to take my Dakota and just soften that paint a little bit. Just enough to, so 
So I have it in place, but it's not quite so, we just want to soften that edge. There we go. Okay. And we're coming down here some more and down underneath here. Yeah, I find it quite fascinating how, even though we think they're all birds, how different they are and how their, their shapes are similar and yet different. This week has been really exciting. We've had um, all the little birds come back, so I have about five or six or seven white crowned sparrows singing in my backyard. And last night I had the air acrobats of... Uh, tree swallows who remember that their nest was here last year so they're back at our place getting ready for that checking out the nest box that uh, our grandson Burke made us a few years ago now let's get it a little bit lighter some of that glow in there to get some okay where are we at here yeah I'm not gonna get this done in an hour <laughs> this just takes the time it takes to get where you want it to go and that's better now I've got the value that I'm looking for and I've got, I'm getting the shape that I'm looking for. Just nice, slow, careful movements. And I've got this glow happening. Okay. As the, the sun will come down, it will come down and, and, you know, it's coming across here, but it's bouncing off of the snow back onto the planes that are facing towards or facing somewhat towards the ground. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing some highlighted area because it's facing towards the, the ground more. And then as it, the plane turns away and faces more towards the sky, then you're not seeing, you know, it's just facing away and not getting any of the light. Okay. A little bit darker yet. Okay, so there we go. We're getting the darkness in there. And there is going to be some areas that seem to fade of the bird into the snow because they're both the same color, basically. Um, there are areas that will fade. And, and that's something we always, you know, we're looking for those, those places that do that, those areas that do that. I think it keeps the... Uh, it interesting. Let's bring a little bit of that light in. Okay, and I'm back to my Dakota because I want to control the amount of paint that's coming on off the brush. And the Dakota, I find I can manage it. So I'm thinking about that reflected light that's in, um, is on the chest of the bird. And we'll come back and finalize the eye in just a little bit. It's not, oh, it's almost, oh, it's not that light. Sometimes when we look at reflected light, we think it's far lighter than it actually is. It certainly is not that light. And I feel like maybe it needs a little bit of that, that sun glow yellow in there, just a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of paint on, clean my brush, dry it off, and then I'm going to pull that and move it around so that I can get that bit of that glow of like the sun is coming in behind. It's 
bouncing up from the snow is where it's bouncing from. Uh, need to make sure that that paint is thick enough so that it covers in what's happening underneath from the background. Okay. Soften the edges. Let that area dry. Now we're at the half turn area here where it's starting to turn, a, turn. So the brightest area is in here where the light is hitting. And then as it turns, we have what they call a half tone. Well, it's not quite that dark. And you can, we'll just bring that down here. Thinking about that shape and bring in some of the light next to it. Bring some of the light into it. Ah, there we go. And move it around, move it around. And bringing that down, I'm gonna bring that in here because I've got a nice color thing happening here. Okay. There we go. So what's the weather like where you guys are at? On this Thursday, we're hoping to get some rain. I um, hope it rains hard, but that doesn't tend to happen very much in Yellowknife. I mean, it does, but not as often as it does elsewhere. Everything's dusty, and it's still pretty chilly out here in Yellowknife. But the birds are back and we are happy. Okay, well, let's do the thing that makes an eye stand out. I just need to find something little. I'm going to put a little wee dot of light right there. All of a sudden that's an eye because it's reflecting the light. And I just used a knitting needle because that end is uh, a perfect little size. I use a knitting needle for measuring and for doing all sorts of things. And so I keep them in my, in my uh, stash over here. Okay, let's bring some of that around here. Okay, so let's work around the eye the whole hour and we're going to spend it all on the on the head and, and just the general getting the body together. Um, what am I looking at? I'm seeing that there's some light areas around the eye here. Let's see if I can find a different... Okay, right. so now I've got a, um, a Princeton mini detailer and you can see how long that liner is and it's thin so I can get into smaller areas and make it, it's easier to manage little fine lines with this one. And I'm just going to wrap around the eye where I can see the light. And I'm going to come around the front of the eye because I can see some light here. And it's coming around. And then it's coming up here. There's an edge of light here. Oops, I need more light, more paint. Oh, Debbie, that sounds wonderful to be able to go swimming. Our lakes are totally frozen. That ain't happening anytime soon. <laughs> but we do have lakes, so we can actually go. Oh, 
Yes. Hey, Sherry. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, now there is a shape over top of the eye that when the ptarmigan is wanting your attention and you to pay attention, it actually is red, but I'm not seeing red. Oh, no, not very much. It's, it's pretty dark. And it lifts its eyebrow and it gets this little bit of... Um, this little bit of color right on there. It's quite dramatic. So I'm just going to take this little mini detailer and I'm going to try and get this shape across. Go skating. Well, actually, it's probably not frozen enough for that now. Um, the surface is not frozen, but yes. In the fall, there are times when, uh, when the uh, um, ice will freeze and there hasn't been any snow. And then there are people who go skating. Hey, Margaret. Oh, glad you could make it. Anyway, people then can go skating on, um, on Great Slave Lake and, and it's pretty dramatic. Now, I'm not a skater and I think at this point in my life that maybe I don't want to really break any bones. So I, you know, I will just let it be the people who have spent more time skating than me. Okay, little details, tiny little details and that's what we're getting to now is getting to all the little details. I was kind of hoping, you know, I'm looking at the time. We have about 17 minutes left. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot down to the feet and get them in place. And then you can see what that looks like. Because right now it looks like he's kind of uh, not working really well. Oh, that's lovely. You got... You're going to have to send me some flowers, so share some flower pictures, Margaret. That would be fun. So we can live vicariously through people who have left and moved south. Okay, so let's get the feet in place. Again, I'm going to start with sort of the whiter paint so that I can see it. And, um, yeah, and then I can build it back. Interesting. I, I pulled the image so that I can really see just the feet. And I think next time I do this, or next time I do one when I have feet, that I'm going to set it up so that I can put that up so you guys can see it too. I hadn't thought of that. So I'm coming in and I'm just getting these shapes put in place. Their little feet actually um, get a little dirty because they're walking over gravel and all of that. They have nice long nails. I'm seeing their their nails. It's quite long. Okay, and I'm going to come in here. Um, where is that? That's about here. Just going to get this shape in here. And I know that there's a cast shadow over the, the foot because um, the body is in the way and it's it's covering over. But I want to first get sort of that shape in here and standing back and looking to see if I've got something close. And then what I have here is it's got three toes and I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, the furthest one there. And then there's the one that is right here with the big nail, but I'm not going to put the nail in yet. I'm just going to put the shape in. And then back here is the third one. And it also has a cast shadow on it from the other foot, which we will put in place shortly. And it comes around here. And I think... Okay, I'm going to... Pull that out. I'm going to back up a little bit further so I can see if I've got the angle right. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So my plan is I will finish this painting and I'm, and I will let you know, let everyone know when it's on eBay so that it can find a new home. Oh, dropping paint brushes. Okay, let's get this other foot in place. We're gonna come around and back up so I can see if it's close to where I want it to be. And there's a third one in here that's just hiding back there. And that comes there. Okay, and we're gonna bring this down and around, just like we're gonna bring this one down and around. And it comes under, and then it comes over here. Their little feet are pretty feathery and it's amazing. They just survive at the coldest temperatures. Those and ravens, you're just, and the red poles. I mean, goodness gracious, those red poles are just little wee bits of anything. And there they are, it's 45 below and they're eating like crazy because they need to keep going. Okay. Yeah, you have to be a really hardy bird to survive here. We do have some really interesting birds that stay. We now have um, Bohemian waxwings that used to go south of the lake, but the city has planted so many uh, trees that um, are berry trees that now they stay here all winter. And it amazes you how they can all survive in such a, a inhospitable climate. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting the feet in place. And we've got about 10 minutes, just over 10, about 10 minutes. So I'm not gonna get all of this done. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> wishful thinking. Okay, come around here and I get that shape, okay. I think what I'm going to do now is come in and start to create form on those feet by using my small uh, Robert Simmons number one liner and starting to do the cast shadow. Oops, better spritz my paint of the feet. And get those shapes in there. Okay. And it's not actually that blue. Interesting. Add a little bit of that in and see what that does. Here we go. And it's too dark. So let's take a little bit of light, of the light paint and add it in. It will be nice when you can actually see my, someday in the future when I can do that. I am bringing the shapes down. Not enough water on my brush. Not enough paint, not enough water. yellow. So I'm using yellow ochre in here because the feet seem to have some yellow ochre happening on it. I'll probably correct that color as I go along. Okay, and as it comes around it goes into that blue again, more blue. So that's fascinating, the shifts of how the light is capturing on, whoops, lighter than that. Okay. 
Yep. Get some water onto that. Clean the brush. Okay. Yeah, come down here. Could be a little darker still, but we'll just add some of that in there and darken it up. Darken it up more. Okay, now we're getting there. Now, okay, now. Yay! Finally got the right color going. And then we're going to come to this toe. And it actually extends out a little further than I had it in the white because, you know, you want to take it, it slow. So I'm going to take some of gray and some of the yellow ochre just a little bit so that I can create the little bit of a toenail that I'm seeing right there. Okay. And there's variations happening on that toe that I will come back to when I'm here by myself doing this work. Um, yeah, okay. And then I have a little bit of a cast shadow here. So let's get that put in place from the other foot. What's the time? Okay, we don't have much longer here before it's time to... We're going to come back and separate the toes here because there's a, a cast shadow happening here and it's more of a blue one, which is kind of interesting. Some of that. And then bring that down. And I'm going to stand back and see that I'm happy with that. Take a little bit of lighter light, lighter paint and bring it around here to the rest of this toe. And it comes around and down into the snow. And again, we're going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre and I'm going to make sort of a little bit of a brown out of it not the best color for this but it's what I have on my palette and and I will make that correction because I'm just going to get that toe in place so I can see where that toenail is right there and it has all sorts of variations on it that I can see when I pull the picture up closer hey Patty welcome Glad to see you. So I'm just I'm just building up the feet because I haven't. Yeah, and now we have a toenail over on here, and I'm going to make it dark because I want the shape of it to be um, sort of very there. Oh, yeah, well, I thought I was going to make it dark, but there you go. Get some more paint on my brush. That would be helpful. And that toenail goes right into the snow. So I can see that it's beyond the cast shadow of, of the foot and, and of the, the bird. Let's make that a little darker and a little bit more. Yes, it's there. There's all sorts of variations in that toe and it's into the snow, so it's, we're not going to see the whole of it. So I'm just going to soften that and make that. Okay, so we kind of are getting the sense of where that foot is, is in space. Um, oh, what's interesting is I realize now that the foot, this part is actually darker than the cast shadow. So I need to darken that up. Um, I can do that by just adding some darker. It's all about comparing and contrasting. 
And it might mean that I actually have to lighten up the, the, um, the shadow here, this area here a little bit more by just adding some light, cleaning my brush off and gently moving the paint around and lightening that area and pulling it out. Nice to see you too, Patty. <laughs> okay, getting that shape in there. All of this will be refined afterwards. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that foot. Let's get the other foot, the other toenail in because we're winding down. And next week I am definitely, um, if you're interested, on the front of my website at dancingravenstudio.ca, I have a way for you to sign up so you can receive the weekly um, emails and see the pictures and of what's and more of a story behind why I'm painting what I'm painting. That will be in those uh, emails that come out every week because there's always a story especially with birds. They make me happy. So you'll know the... Okay. What's interesting with this foot is the, the, there's a little light ridge here and the foot is going over and there's a little bit of darkness right underneath there that I will play with when I get that put together, when I get to that point. But now I'm going to focus in on the back side. Oh, you know what? I think we're, we're going to have to say that we're, we're done, actually. I'll just pull a little bit of that in there. I think our time is just about gone. So you saw what I got done in an hour. <laughs> I will work on this th this evening. I'm actually taking a class a uh, painting class right now, um, which, you know, it's, kind of, it's been totally fun. It just started and it's eight weeks long. So I'll be working on that this evening too. But, okay, I think that that's a good place to, to uh, end with today. Well, a whole, uh, a whole week, a whole hour doesn't get you very far in painting. It's quite amazing how far you don't get an hour. You know, I never track my hours because sometimes I think that that would be a little disheartening, <laughs> but I don't track the hours. I just paint until the painting is done. So next week we will start. If you uh, would like to, please hit like on Facebook and like my page and subscribe on YouTube. And every week at Thursday at 2 o'clock Mountain Time, I'm going to be here for an hour painting away. June the 10th, I start painting for my annual show. So that will mean at that point what you'll see is little bits of what I'm painting for my annual show. I haven't made those decisions yet. Um, and the timer has just gone. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Stop. So we're done. And thank you for coming today. And we will see you next week. Bye.